hope that everybody is uh, refreshed after the coffee break and ready for our last panel of the day. Uh, the most politically not correct one, the dark side of the gastronomy, with my uh, distinguished guests. Uh, we will start right away, but I'll just uh, let you remember that we have both the quiz for you. The details will be sent to all the registered participants of our conference to their mail. Uh, we also have a survey and we'll be very happy if you will kindly answer those questions for us, because this way we try to measure what's the situation uh, all over the world for the restaurants in this pandemic. Uh, era we are living now in. And we are starting the panel for the dark side of the gastronomy with my guests and please let me introduce them shortly. Alex Atala for the last 13 years uh, his restaurant in Sao Paulo Dom being the first in Brazil to receive two Michelin stars. He was also on the with his restaurant, the part of the world's 50 best restaurants listed by Restaurant Magazine. Alex Atala also has uh, involvement in uh, other restaurant in Sao Paulo, Bio Healthy Eating, which has goals of using 100 uh, of all ingredients uh, and encouraging consumption awareness uh, being echo. We have uh, with us Alex, uh, and I hope he can hear us. So Alex, welcome. <laughs> We have also Rodolfo Guzman, who after being after working for many important restaurants in Chile and Europe, Europe uh, he has built at the end of 2006 Borago, his own restaurant, and has also created the CIB, a food researching center, in order to focus on discovering the new possibilities of Ch Chilean ingredients. Hi, Rodolfo. With us today is also Floriano Pellegrino, the chef and owner of the One Michelin Star restaurant Bros. Previously worked uh, for the most important star kitchens with Luis Antonio Anduriz, Eneco Acza, Alexandre Gautier, René Redzepi, and the French Claude Bossi in London. Hi, Floriano. Hi, everybody. <laughs> And we have with us uh, Eric Wildegard, uh, who works in Denmark's best restaurants, including Noma, Soler, Crow, and Almanac, and now runs the restaurant Jordner with his uh, wife Tina, creating an exciting farm to table dining experience. Hi, Eric. Hello. And uh, hopefully, shortly, we'll be joined by Gangan Anand, uh, an Indian chef, owner, and executive chef of the progressive Indian restaurant named Gagan in Bangkok, Thailand, uh, who previously played drums in various rock bands before embarking on a culinary career. He's facing some technical issues right now, so hopefully, he will join our discussion shortly. So, Within this set of uh, my guests, I would like to, to start our discussion. Uh, and as is the it's titled Dark Side of the Gastronomy, we will tackle a lot of uh, maybe not unpleasant, but difficult or challenging subjects uh, regarding the gastronomy, because we had very pleasant talks throughout the day. Now let's, let's have some serious talk about what's going on in the business. Rodolfo, you are a very successful chef, but it wasn't always like that. I had the information that uh, your restaurant restaurant was uh, for six years uh, didn't earn any uh, money I'm sure that was a difficult time that was a challenging uh, time how did you deal with it how did you manage to go for such a long time without hope or with some hope in your mind please please elaborate a little bit on that how how do you be how you can be persistent for such a long time and believe in your own success Hey, Anna, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm very excited to, to be here. Um, well, to be honest, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, where I go, it's more a consequence than, than, the, than a, a person, if you like. Uh, we, we certainly, you know, we started this very small little tiny restaurant back then. I was still in my 20s when we started and, and, and you know when you're young you you have more uh, wishings than than experience we all know that in in to be honest we we just like you said the restaurant we did terrible awfully <laughs> at the beginning in in uh, in many senses not only economically uh but it's it's just a journey it's a matter of fact that having a beautiful journey also i'm, I'm i shouldn't say it but i'm very grateful to to be able to taste that 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 sort of experience, because it's those sort of journeys are always um, 
they're they're able to bring knowledge not not to yourself only as a, as a cook but to your entire team and to feel more appreciation for 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 the good things to come um so we had a absolutely an empty restaurant even so you know at the beginning chileans the the the, the people in chile um didn't even know that that we existed uh so it was a big trouble because in Chile you would never ever trouble to eat. Like uh, you know, you have amazing countries in, in, in the region such as you know uh, Peru, Brazil, or Argentina, Mexico, where, where gastronomy or culture is, is more attached. Chile, it is of course is well developed nowadays, but but um, there were too many things much more important than food. It was food. It was more related to nourishment rather than than, than culture, you know. So um, restaurants weren't that that sort of a thing that where you um, wanted to travel to eat or or <laughs> or just to think on gastronomy as its own. But um, at the end, we we started this restaurant. It was very very weird for for Chile because not the good things. Uh, not the best things, but the good things we said they were coming from outside of the country, you know, and and um, and I would say um, so a Japanese fish would fly all the way up from Japan to Chile will have more quality. This is of course this is unreal. We live only one hour away from the coast in Santiago, you know? So the best quality is the one that it just, you, 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 you just catch it and bring it to the restaurant. But Chileans, we, we didn't really comprehend this, this, this uh, sort of equation. So um, uh, it was very tough at the beginning because also we didn't know anything about, uh, about the, the ingredients in Chile, unfortunately, because of the same reason, you know? um so we have to learn we didn't want it to be a docu- we didn't want it to documenting or anything we had a whole bunch of needs to, to to do you know so to learn um and 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 at that point uh, it was a big journey it took us a long time but also at the same time the restaurant uh economic wise just like you said it was it was done like under the water and, and, and for us, it was um, very, very hard. And I don't know, I try to explain in the book also, I have no, no answer for this. I don't know how we do it. I don't know how we did it, I'm sorry. We, uh, in Chile, we call it <laughs> bicycle, just riding the bicycle, you know, <laughs> feeling the momentum. And that's what we felt, you know. So um, I, I would say the Borago is one of those things that happens in life. <laughs> Where you're you're putting your entire energy on it, where you're 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 pursuing your passion. You you of course you have to have the skills as a cook to make it happen. But uh, it suddenly suddenly happened, you know. After we should be in a actually we were in a absolutely bankrupt. Uh, and and I was trying to sell the restaurant um, after after I don't know after the fourth year I was trying to to sell the restaurant. The fifth year, I was so close, so close. It, I, I, I was going into not another depression because my personality doesn't allow me to to get to that deep hole, uh, fortunately. But uh, I was like so frustrated. I couldn't do anything. Um, I, I remember the guy that, that wanted to buy the, the restaurant said to me, he, he, he wanted to do the transaction, you know, just to buy the, the, the entire thing. And he said to me, you know, Rudy, listen, I'm not going to buy this restaurant because, I mean, it's impossible. You know, I, I kind of analyze the situation, your numbers. It's it's impossible. I mean, you're, this is it. So I, I got very, very frustrated by that time. And then um, suddenly we, we, we heard about the uh, this list in Latin America. Uh, back in 2013, uh, that 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 is was going to be a version of the um, World 50 Best in the region. Uh, so I said, like, okay, I have nothing to to lose to go there and just to see what happens. So we went there, 
and the rest of them did it pretty good. We had no, no, you know, no hope, no nothing. I, all I knew is, is that I was on a bank route. So suddenly the restaurant passed from a totally empty restaurant from one, one day to the next. Uh, it was fully, fully booked for uh, within a month. So it was, it was kind of, it was quite amazing. I couldn't believe it. It, it, it took me a long time to get used to it, actually. But um, to be honest, I'm still thinking how we did it, how we managed to, to move forward. I would love to have that recipe and tell you, hey, look, listen, the, this, it was a plan. We, we thought about every single little detail. But Borago, it, it was, I feel that it was more about the momentum of having nothing. Uh, unfortunately, I have no, I don't know if I'm saying, I, I have, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I have no partners. I'm not coming from a, from a hap family that can support all of that. So it was one of those things that happens in life once again. And I'm very grateful to, to be part of that, of that journey. Yeah, it's it's sad you don't have this recipe because in this those hard pandemic times it might be a, a top seller to to share your great success <laughs> story of of the misery of many years and then a great success. So still let, let's let's keep on this thought of the momentum and riding the bike t t till you can and till till you reach the the, the success. But I know that you also had another um, challenge uh, that you also expressed in one of the interviews when you said. Chile has to be one of the main countries uh, that is part of the culinary future of the world. And um, you've, you've mentioned uh, about scrapping many things just, just from the beginning, but also we know that when um, some parts of the world are trying to uh, put their cuisine uh, into the fine dining to show their uh, um, their roots and show their cultural heritage uh, in, within the fine dining they find also some identity problems so they know don't know how to show it how to uh, pursue this um, this journey with their cuisine to to be to be shown uh, much uh, broader to the to the public uh, so do you feel yourself the ambassador of Chilean cuisine now and if yes uh, how did you achieve uh, the status <coughs> okay uh, going back to the to the first question I'm sorry um, if there has to be a recipe for, for this you know um, I would I would say the COVID has been very tough. It's been very tough. I, I, you know, it's probably just in, in a different language, if you like. But it's far uh, to be the hardest thing we ever had at, as a restaurant. So the, our, I would say we're very lucky because it's, it's not that we feel prepared, but we know what hard times are, you know? So in, in a way, we were grateful on that. And, and about the question you're doing, um, you know, um, I feel an ambassador. Yes, pro more than ambassador, I feel uh, a lot of responsibilities now because there is a y young generation coming behind us, you know. Now they know the ingredients. Now they know what a good restaurant in Chile can do. Now they know uh, many things that, that are happening in Chile for the first time ever. And I would say that more than an ambassador, I feel a big responsibility on that sense and many others, if you like. But um, again, uh, as I said, um, that uh, Chile represents many things because uh, Chile wasn't on the map in Latin America, if you like. You, know, you, you were coming to Chile to, to maybe to go to beautiful Patagonia, maybe you, you, you were coming to, to go up north to, to the Atacama Desert or to do some snow skiing. We have four snow, three snow ski centers about 45 minutes from downtown in Santiago. That's beautiful. Of course, people are trying for that, but you would never ever would travel to Chile to eat. You know, people used to say that we overcook the fish and we bad treat, you know, many, many ingredients. And, and it's because of what I told you before, you know, we, we, we felt not attachment to food in many senses. So I, uh, when we opened the restaurant, um, we said we felt uh, very attracted to the possibility of knowing nothing about a subject. And this is very important and very relevant to us till nowadays. 
because when you don't when you don't know nothing about a subject there is a very interesting opportunity to learn from so that's that's what we became we decided to became uh, into professional learners so we said uh, probably we didn't do it at the beginning in the first six seven eight maybe ten years we we weren't doing it you know but but uh there's three things i consider uh very relevant for any cook in the world to to become a good cook or or, or a good restaurant to understand who you are uh where you come from and what you gotta run the deeper you you learn from the better for for, for yourself and the more uh complete as a cook or as a restaurant you become so <clears throat> Saying all of that, uh, we started again uh, that journey that we, we know we knew nothing about Chile, you know, and we thought that it was the biggest challenge and opportunity at the same time. So we started to write it down, you know, making notes, <laughs> you know, hey, wow, this ingredient it, it comes from this area, it comes from Paragon. What we do? Oh, we cook it this way. So it has emulsifiers or whatever. We wrote it down. It grows from this date till this date. Oh, fantastic, amazing. So, um, but we, the, the seasonality are, is very short in Chile, you know? It's very, very, very short. So our seasons are very uh, winter, you really feel it. Spring, same, summer is very dry and yeah. So uh, we didn't have much time to experiment with each ingredient. So it was going to take us a long time to learn from zero. So suddenly, we discovered, or not to discover, I wouldn't say that, uh, we noticed <laughs> that it was a big opportunity, even bigger than what we thought, because Chile, it's one of the biggest endemic countries in the world, such as, you know, Brazil, Alex is, is you know, Alex know that, um, and, 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 you know, but the thing is, in Chile, we never thought about food, and our economic model says that we, uh, bring we, we we sell ingredients to some other countries they they create knowledge and then we rebuy it so that's a perfect economic cycle that's how chile that's the secret behind economy of chile you know that's why we we as a small country we develop well uh but we never created knowledge so in a way uh we started to create knowledge behind every ingredient that we want, we feel attracted to it, and that path was amazing. So uh, we really think that not only for gastronomy, yeah, of course, gastronomy is is amazing because it's, it's everything, you know, it's culture, it's people, it's it's our all history as a, <clears throat> I'm sorry, as humans, you know, but also about possibilities. Uh, saying that the Chile is one of the biggest endemic countries in the world. It means economic, economical opportunities, cultural opportunities, of course, to, to bring within the next future, maybe, I don't know, uh, to bring uh, new flavors to maybe to some more people, even so, maybe outside of the country. Um, what I'm saying about this is, is uh, um, healthy food, you know, good quality of food. We, 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 we have a big land, which, which in, in a case is, is uh, very um, pristine in a way, you know? We haven't, uh, we, we've been able to take care of and, and we can, it has a lot of potential in many senses, especially in agriculture, especially the, the raw materials, you know? We have a coast that, that it, it goes from up north to down south that is more than, has more than 4,000 uh, kilometers. So it's a, it's a very cold ocean. Um, so suddenly we developed four lines of work. Uh, one of them is a, is a seaweed. We have more than 750 kinds of seaweeds. Chile, Chileans, we only use four kinds traditionally or whatever in the, in the most recent culture. Uh, then we, um, we uh, Alophytes, the rock plants that they grow in, in, in the rocks, they have 38% of protein. It's, it's super tasty whenever you use them. Um, and, and the, of course, the fungi world, the, the mushrooms. So we, 
we started um, with 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 all of those uh, ingredients and and of course fish uh, fat, the small little the tiny fish such as sardines and anchovies we we never use those kinds of of uh, fish and seafoods also we never use uh, so Chile has a big big opportunity to to develop a great gastronomy it wasn't on the map now it is and it's a I think it's great it's, so there that, are two <laughs> so there are two victorious battles behind you the first one for the sake of your own restaurant and the second for the sake of the Chilean heritage so congr congratulations on those although those are also a, a little bit of the dark sides of the gastronomy showing how much we have to put how much effort has to go um, from our side uh, till we create something that lasts for for years and many people think that it's just like like this talking about uh, some uh, challenging times uh, eric i know that uh, there is a long story behind behind your uh, cooking uh, career and being uh, a successful chef uh, nowadays and that it was all wasn't always an easy and nice path uh, through your life and there is also some uh, um, i've heard that there is also some love story behind the the way you have became a, a chef. So could you share with us your dark story within the gastronomy? <laughs> wow, it's a, a huge topic, <laughs> uh, like a whole life story, which I have to sum up in 15 minutes, almost impossible. But love conquers all in the end. And you know, my, my path towards opening this restaurant has been very, very tough. And um, but not that tough that I didn't learn anything from it. Uh, on the other side, uh, on the other side, I actually gained a lot of experience, which I can use now in my my running of the restaurant. So, but um, yeah, yeah. But do you do you think that there are any experiences from your life that can be uh, used also in those times that we are facing now? I think that the subject of the pandemic and and challenging ourselves and fighting with with different di difficult and various obstacles is something that goes back and back in every discussion. We, we 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 somehow cannot skip that because this is what keeps us going. So, do you find in your life any lessons, anything that uh, it can be valuable for for others? as well how how to manage the tough times and and still uh, pursue your dreams i think uh, with passion comes a lot of uh, heart and um, i think that i can speak for the whole uh, world gastronomy when i say that we are here because we have heart and we push because we believe that we we have what it takes but also what we hear from rodolfo that if even though you have nobody believing you sort of speaking then you just have to push on to, to go where you want to be. And, you know, it is always they, they believe in yourself, even though there is a pandemic right now and, and you have, I'm pretty sure a lot of restaurants have a really tough time, but good times will come and or else we just have to adapt into, to, to where we want to belong as a restaurant. We've just talked with Rodolfo about the, the aspect that uh, building something successful for years takes years to build as for the restaurant, as for the discovering the culture. But uh, looking you know, on a smaller scale, we also know that the work in the gastronomy is something extremely hard and challenging. Those are the long hours, long days, uh, running over hours, uh, putting everything, your heart, your time, your energy into, into your work, into what you're creating. And and uh, what we know that is also a lot of young young people use uh, drugs, use alcohol, use anything that can uh, ease on their tension or help them run longer hours, be more, be be, be better, be faster. Um, what do you think is the solution to avoid such extreme uh, options? Uh, what should change? You have both the the, um, the optics of the employee and employer at the moment. So what do you think, how we can support people not to have many dark stories of, of such kind in the gastronomy? Uh, I would say that our generation, my generations of chefs and the generation before me, we, we like you said, we used uh, different various uh, substances to, to keep going to achieve our dream. But you know, it's, with, 
with that experience, we have to, to give it on to the new generation and tell them, you don't have to be high to do your job, for example. You don't have to drink every night after service. Because if you are doing what you love, it shouldn't be a challenge like that. And I think that, you know, it's, a, it's hard to sum up. Um, but, but of course, there is a lot of devils in the industry towards uh, like the demons of the industry is a lot of alcohol, a lot of hard drugs. But you also have to understand that if you want to live a life outside the restaurant scene and have like two various lives working together, you want to be with your friends Saturday night, but you, you just finished a six weeks, uh, a six days work week, then it's hard to catch up with the guys when you, you meet in the city two o'clock. I can understand that. But perhaps the best advice I give my chefs is they should go home and then spend the Sunday having a, a, a drink with their friends there and then go home in a reasonable time. Because me, as an example, I, I, I fucked it all up by drinking and snorting too much cocaine. I am the worst example of uh, how to be a good guy in this industry. Um, but I was saved by, by love. I met my wife and she told me, you need to make a choice. And that is my, this is how we run the restaurant here. We, we tell people you have to make a choice. Either you're on board or else you're not on board. You can't be both places. You can't live in the dark world and then be a part of a bright future. It's impossible. So it seems that you have to find a balance in your life and not putting everything on one card, like being uh, within the industry. But as your example says, uh, you've just said your, your wife and uh, her love saved you. So, so there is something else you need also to, to, to find in the life, not only putting yourself 100% into work. Yeah, but you, you need to know what you're stepping into because gastronomy is not a work. It is a way of living. You, you become a chef. You're not having a job as a chef. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that before they enter the industry, that you cannot switch it on and off. You are a chef 24 seven. And by that, you also need to sacrifice yourself into it. And for the most people, I think it's hard to, to realize that because then they feel that they skip out on other things in life, like friendships, and family. But you need to find joy within the chef community and be part of the world. You cannot be a part-time chef, like going home after work. If you don't think about food, you're in the wrong industry. It's as simple as that. Yeah, but hopefully there are many uh, wise managers and employers uh, who can uh, say to their chefs, as you've just said, uh, what you are uh, communicating to your your chefs and the people working uh, for, for you, that you need to find this balance, you need to find something in your life that will, will balance those long hours, even if you are uh, not working, but having the attitude of a chef 24 hours per seven. Um, Alex, I would like to ask you about uh, the, another challenge of the modern world for the chefs. We are still being uh, shown uh, the pictures on the Instagram, all the social media of the great things, the beautiful dishes, the newest uh, uh, things um, that we gain from the technology, laser, 3D printing and th things like that. Don't you think that uh, some uh, young chefs are being creative just for the sake of creativity so they are just trying to gallop in the towards uh, being the best the the most shiny and uh, showing off instead of focusing what the cuisine cooking preparing food is really about oh thank you joanna guys thank you thank you for the thank you eric thank you Rodolfo. uh you guys are amazing, so <laughs> glad to be here. Well, to be straight to the point, uh, creativity. I have been creative, using creativity my lifetime. I remember when I started on back uh, 20 years ago, I was doing just because I want to do. And in that point, there was something amazing who I only understood uh, maybe um, two or three years ago, which was be spontaneous. In my time, be creative wasn't 
trying to show off. It, uh, it was just trying to do something in a different way. And this is spontaneity I can still find in the young chefs. So I don't think that we, as uh, old chefs, we, we have the right to say to the, those kids that guys don't do that. It's, a, it's, 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 it's the flip side of coin. We, we might say, guys, keep doing, but just be focused. Uh, uh, creativity is amazing when you have utility. So this is innovation. And I'll try to, 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 to make that in a short uh, explanation. Be creative. It is not a, it isn't. It isn't, it, 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 it is not do what uh, nobody did before. It's the opposite. It's do what everybody does in an unexpected way. And what is innovation? Innovation is utility, more creativity. There is no meaning try to do something that only myself can do. We might to figure out a way to spread our recipes, to spread our techniques, to spread our creativity. This is, this is guarantee utility. So keep focusing be in utility and in innovation more than be only trying to, 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 to keep creating, but uh, keep alive the flame of uh, spontaneity. Do you think that we can uh, now ha somehow stream in our creativity into sustainability aspect? For example, we had uh, some previous discussions today and it turned out that it's not so easy to be sustainable uh, for, for many of the uh, restaurants and there are still wishes to be more sustainable, but also the, uh, the chefs were, were saying, yes, but we know what we are facing and we are not as sustainable as we would like to be. Do you think that this creativity can be now used in a good uh, case. I know that your Instituto ATA, so the ATA Foundation, um, is uh, focused uh, on uh, revealing to people the real value of the food, the, the appreciation of what we are eating, not, not just consuming, but focusing on what, what we have on our plates. So what's your approach and what uh, comes from the work of your foundation in this subject? Well, in a way, we try to support the, 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 the food chain, small producers. Let's understand that uh, big wines, big uh, cheese in Europe, it, 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 it is not made by big companies. It's made for small producers. So support is more, small producers can be the key, the way to show to people that biodiversity has a value. When you talk about biodiversity, maybe didn't taste, but when you taste biodiversity, this is, can, can be so helpful. And the, the, the wine industry show to us how important is the biodiversity. Nowadays, we drink, drink wine from all over the world from different grapes, from, from, from endemic grapes from all over the world. So this is, this is amazing. And we might do the same in, in, in gastronomy. Value, bring back value. Uh, uh, to make a long story, a, a long story short, uh, we have a restaurants to make money. As, as Rodolfo said, we, we, we need to make money. And we love money. We have been trained for it. It's part of our, our culture, make money. But stop. Why we don't throw away a single coin? Maybe if you throw away a coin, is to make a wish to make more money. This is our relation with money. Why we throw away food? Maybe because we undervalue food. And the food that we throw away has more economic value than the coin that you didn't throw away. So it's time to rebalance the value. Pandemic or the pandemic moment that, 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 that we are living right now, we are facing right now, let, let, let clear that uh, we can live without, for example, soccer players, but we can live without, uh, without uh, small producers food producers. So value is the key. Value is the answer. 
So yes, this is another dark side of the gastronomy, <laughs> the, the sustainability and um, yeah. a, amount of food that we are wasting or as you've just said, throwing away, not realizing their true value or underestimating the value of small producers, uh, those ones that, that we can really rely on, especially if we talk about the locals, local producers in those hard pandemic times where not always everything can be brought to us from another part of the world, but there are always those ones who are close to us who can supply us with what we want, what we need, and we can create some relationship with them. I would like to tackle another aspect uh, of maybe what we can say it's not such a dark side of the gastronomy, but rather a challenge uh, um, uh, talking about doing everything at once in those busy times, maybe a little bit calmer now because of the pandemic, because we cannot travel so much, but still we are uh, throwing ourselves in the new projects, opening new restaurants, uh, writing books, uh, being on TV, uh, doing some shows. Don't you think that uh, some people are, I mean, of course, uh, by this, the chefs, we are still staying within the industry. They are lo losing the fun part of being the chef, of being the creator. Uh, and, and we are tackling a too many things at, a, at once, too many, uh, too many projects at the same time. What's your view, Alex, on, on that? Well, as a chef, our first commitment is delivering delicious. We might, we, we might keep focus, focus on that. Uh, 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 Deliciousness is it's, it's our it's, it's our business is our it's, it's our uh, it's our dream it is our um, it's our everything so since you have uh, a successful a successful business I'm not talking about make money I'm talking about delivering what a chef might to do which is delicious uh, feel free. To, to, to free and allow that to do whatever you want, so you can use your voice. Nowadays, we as a chef, we have a, we, we are the strongest voice in the, in the in the in the in the food chain. So we have a different chefs in the world who have a, their successful restaurants, uh, like Massimo Bottura doing something uh, with, with a social gastronomy, like uh, Rene have, have been doing for 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 for, for, um, for the Nordic culture. Uh, that, there's many possibilities. The thing is. Just have the balance between commitment, your main commitment again, which is being in the kitchen, and and the pleasure to break the rules, to push the bound, but the boundaries. We might understand this is can be a dark side. Push the boundaries, break the rules. <laughs> yeah, surely this can be, especially that frequently those projects are very nice uh, uh, to our eyes because they bring uh, uh, fame, they bring big money, they, be, they bring uh, exposure, which can be then translated to money and fame again and again. So this might be quite um, a temptation and then we might forget about this uh, main um, duty that we have to create create the deliciousness, as you've just said, that uh, we have to create something that firstly lands on the plate and just then is being shown on TV. But firstly, we have to show people something that is that is delicious. Floriano, um, I would like to, to, to tackle some questions with, with you now. I hope you can hear us clearly because I know that we, we had a drop off uh, the, for the technical reasons. You have uh, built yourself in a, in a very short uh, time and you think as a brand uh, and operate as a holding company, but you have no investors uh, behind. So what is the thinking of such business, such a risky approach, but we of course heard uh, about a similar approach from Rodolfo uh, today uh, already when you when you have no one to to support you uh, financially but still you want to pursue um, your dream oh wow um, everybody I'm so happy to be here and thank you to the best chef awards to believe in me since the beginning I'm so happy excited to be in front of this amazing icon chef and many of you spared me, all of my team, and my careers. 
Um, but I will be very precise and direct, like me, since I here represent the new generation chef, foodie, because all of my followers, the clients, clients are the new generation. I'm millennial. When we start without money, just one thing was clear. And this is important to be idea clear. It's so important. First step, we trust yourself. Second step, we want to be more than chef. We believe in quality in other fields, communication skills behind gastronomy. Third step, identity. Why people come from around the world to visit me, my team in uh, Salento, Puglia, Oscar Rano? Why is an uh, amazing question? So the answer is identity. More than beautiful place, beautiful restaurant, beautiful uh, or big uh, wine cellar. These are so um, important for me and for my colors and for bros. Identity first, concept first. These steps have, have to be clear before you have an open the restaurant or you decide to cook, open your late life in the world, you understand what you can give. Your, uniqueness. This is so important for me because I'm from Italy. And in Italy, uh, for the new generation, the new restaurant is so difficult. But the identity for me uh, is so important. We talked today in another panel about uh, bringing on the powers of the community, reaching to what's local, because this is the power of especially those tough pandemic times. And you're famous in Italy for not taking uh, Italians at the beginning, but at the same time you believe in the bros family so much that one of the most used uh, hashtags uh, is be bros. Uh, so, uh, Please uh, tell me what's your approach to, to human resources and to basing on uh, the fact of being local, being not local. What, what's, what's behind this philosophy of yours from your beginnings? Uh, first one, it's important to be clear. Why we didn't bring Italian in Italy in the beginning, we always try to be international in our place. That is fucking cool. So we brought the world at home in Salento. Bros is not a fancy name. It means everything we make, family, gang, crew. We use the mafia, a lot of in a positive, amazing meaning. We select our guys throughout our office and our sous chef as they are sisters or brothers. Our target is to build um, to best out of them. We have the world to be delivered or the best one. This is a secret of our success. We think like a um, rugby team, we, we help them believe in themselves. I always say, believe in yourself. We work with them from chef uh, side, communication, professional, personal. We each one of the bros family with the social media account and community. To be, okay, this is so important, I control guys all communicate all uh, communicate at the same times and martin barasetegi in the same way martin barasetegi is like my dad always said to me told to me before being a great chef you have to be a great man and this is the first step to all my guys and bros so we've already added to our dikes, dark side of the gastronomy list the word mafia. So thank you for that. Yes, this, this is broadening our, our perception. In the good way, of course, in the good way. I come from uh, South Italy. Uh, I, come from, I come from the street. Uh, it's important for me to organize it. It's important for me to... Uh, show the guys a new way of success, not just in the street, but in the kitchen. I, I work with tomato and eggplant and also have a good car and a good, and a good house and also a little bit success. This is important for the new generation to understand this. Yeah, so, so I understood that this mafia is not, not understood in the classical way, but rather in the way that we are 
creating a kind of a com community, but it plays well with the, with the title of our, our panel. There is a question I would like to ask to you all, um, uh, guys, uh, regarding what are the uh, sites, unseen sites of the com contemporary chef, uh, in addition to knowing how to cook. What, what should uh, such a contemporary good chef uh, have as, has as, a, um, as his personality, as uh, his attitude, at, as his knowledge, anything that is uh, almost as important as knowing how to cook a, a good meal. Rodolfo, what would be your thought on that? Uh, well, I believe that, um, you know, when you becoming a chef, like, a, you know, you have a team, it doesn't matter if, it, if it's smaller or bigger, um, you, you have a whole big amount of responsibilities, uh, not only with your restaurant, but with the people around yourself, you know? There's, you know, a rest, a restaurant as its own, it cannot be conceived without the food that is cutting the food out of the ground for you, you know? And so there's a lot of people uh, that, that um, such as, you know, agricultures or fishermen, if you, if you have the chance, maybe in some countries you don't have the chance, it's all good. But if you have the chance and you, you, you establish a relationship between all the, those people, of course, you, your quality is going to be beautiful. But also, it's it's going to be um, it's going to be a big responsibility with them, and and also with with your employees, with the people who's eating the food. <laughs> so it's it's you have to pay salaries, you have to be. Uh, it's it's good to receive you know recognition. We we all love that, of course. We 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 as, as Alex said, you know chefs. We, 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 we were uh, public people, you know, probably we were more the, the, the most uh, known from the entire food chain, if you like, you know, uh, but, but that also had the, um, the, the, the responsibility, just going back to your work every day and, and just to, to make it better, not only with the restaurant, make it better w w with the producers, make it better with your clients. At the end of the day, what I mean, it's just food is about love. It's about care. It's about taking care of your own as the first thing and the people you have around. And, and I really mean it like the entire amount of people you have around in this, in, in, in the social media, even in the social media, the people that you don't see in some other countries that you maybe never meet before, but they know you. So it's it's uh, in in the young chefs, you know, they look you as a as a wrong uh, as a as a role model, and yeah. So I believe that is the big the biggest thing uh, as a chef. You have to be worried about uh, little things, but also very things that sometimes are out of your hands. <laughs> and is is a thing that we chefs we have to be think and think about it because food, it's, it's very important. Sometimes people, we don't realize uh, it's, it's the, 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 if you think about the, the way we, sometimes we don't use the, the right way, you know, uh, the food, we throw away too much or, or even the new, the, the new things, that, the new ideas behind food to be more sustainable, if you like, because there, there's people even at home look at you and, and, and bring in new ideas. So, yeah, I think it's, it's about that. <laughs> Thank you. Alex, what would be your thoughts on that from, from the perspective of your experience? So, so, yes, I think we cannot hear you. You've muted yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but no, no, it's working, sorry. Uh, since my, my background, since my point of view, since my, yeah. my short history, uh, uh, the characteristics about, uh, uh, that, 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 <laughs> that are good for the, for the cooks, for the modern chefs, besides just knowing how to cook, what, 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 what strong side they should have to... Be grateful. Gratitude. We might, we, we, we might understand that uh, we didn't own the, the nature. We are just part of it. And if we are talking about nature, we might understand that a good restaurant, a perfect restaurant, can live without a chef, 
but the chef can live without the team. And the team is not composed by only the, your staff. It's composed, composed also with, with your suppliers. So be grateful with your team, your suppliers, the mother nature and the life. Simple as that. Simple, but yes, I think frequently we forget uh, that uh, th those are not only the people just right around us, but the circle is much broader and the things that we yeah. should be grateful for are, are much, much broader. Eric, what would be your approach to the, to the unseen sides of, of a modern uh, chef to be, to be a successful or good one or the best one? I think uh, it is uh, starting with, like Alex, he says, with the respect. And also knowing that you have a choice and perhaps the fish doesn't have a choice, but you have a choice when it arrives into the kitchen. And in this kitchen, we actually joke around saying we rather fire a chef than throwing a fish in the bin because we, we have the choice. And, and to, to know that is also to have heart towards what you work with, because it, it can be eggplants, it can be caviar, it can be whatever, all ingredients are precious. And if you as a chef and a young chef come into this community, I think my best advice would be to be respectful towards everybody you meet on your way. If it's a supplier, if, if it's a three mission star chef, the world's best chef, whatever, you have to have respect in all aspects of what you do because you always have a choice. But they, you know, and also you have to understand that if you treat your staff very well, they don't have to be the the most technical chefs to be working in a good restaurant because the skills they need to earn, you, you should be good enough as a chef to teach them. So what we buy in the restaurant for with staff, it is uh, personalities because we need to be a family here. And, um, and I think that taking care of your, your own, as Rodolfo said, is also taking care of your staff and make sure there is a work-life balance, which make them, which makes your, your staff sustainable in a long term. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for those thoughts. And Floriano, for, for you, what are the unseen sites for the contemporary chef that uh, must be an addition to the cooking uh, uh, knowledge? Uh, this, is, this is the most important point for me. Uh, Bros always think outside the box. You see, uh, for example, our new campaign menu, winter autumn menu in Bros. My role as chef changed in these years. I'm obsessed with telling young chefs, they say ourselves, a Merle chef is not only out of time, but it's insane. Now it is the time to change the classical education. Chef school in Italy, for example, are not ready to create contemporary chef. Uh, my, the, the new avant-guardia uh, is not about food and technology. After the chef like Alex Atala, it's all the chef here, Ferranga, René, Massimo. It's difficult to make avant-guardia. Avant-guardia for me is no technology or food. For me, avant-guardia is a new role of a new chef in this time. Uh, like me, like Isabella, like all my team, millennial, generation Z. Uh, this is the point for me now. Uh, we have, we are, um, we are entrepreneur, communi communicator, visionary, so we are born in this situation, in this vision. My generation has to be really communication, branding, economy, and policy. Uh, so I say to the young chef, and a lot of chef, my friend now see me in this. Uh, in this time, uh, learning to cook is only a level one in a scale from zero to ten. Just only cook. This is important for us to be entrepreneurs with your money. This is important. 
Thank, thank you for, for your vision uh, on that. Uh, guys, I would like to get back to the main subject of our uh, today's discussion, the dark side of the gastronomy. And I would like to ask uh, you what, what the dark side of the gastronomy means to you from your experience or from the stories you've seen, you've heard, you've managed as the employers or you've uh, uh, seen by your own eyes, no matter from what perspective, perspective what would you call the dark side of the uh, gastronomy? Maybe let's start with Alex. <laughs> Always the dark side is mine. <laughs> 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 well, dark side of gastronomy. We over push it ourselves. We, we, we accept the pressure. Uh, we believe in or we overvalue prices, lists, stars. Let's be human again. Let's cook by love. Let's, let's feed people with love. We might to, to, to bring back values, real values. Be happy in the kitchen. Feel yourself strong inside your, your, your whites. This is, this, this is the point. Sometimes, I do believe that we overvalue, myself at least, I overvalue many, many things that uh, didn't change my restaurant, didn't make my restaurant better. Maybe made my, made my restaurant more famous, but not better. And understand myself. So dark side of the kitchen can be be yourself, believe in yourself. And don't think about the dark side. <laughs> think about the bright side. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep it outside your your, your bubble yeah. that the dark side exists, and maybe yeah. it, it will vanish. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, Thank you. From, yeah, Eric, from your experience, what is really the dark side of the gastronomy? I think you have to switch on your microphone. <laughs> that will help. That will help a lot. Yes, I think that Alex he said. He says it very well that we we push ourselves into and we accept the, that that is just the way of life. So there is only one life. I, I said earlier that you are a full time chef, but you, that doesn't mean that you have to kill yourself in the process of being the best. You you need to slow down and be part of the moment that you're in, because from experiences, <laughs> you know you can push yourself to 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 a limit where you either break. Or you become something which you you shouldn't be, and um, I think for the new generation and for 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 the real dark side of the gastronomy is that we all have to perform for some imaginary list stars or whatever. That we all want to be that one percent of the chef community who are doing a TV show on BBC. It is not what it's about. It is about cooking for your guests. And remember why you become a chef, because we all have experience when we grew up cooking, a, uh, we were baking cakes with our grandma. It made us happy. We want to share that love. And in the process, we became drug addicts and alcoholics. Then it's not worth it, is it? So, so, so please, respect and love is the two key words to, to success in this business. And you need to respect yourself. Rodolfo, do you agree or would you add something to, to that uh, list <coughs> that uh, Alex and Eric already brought to us? What is the real dark side of the gastronomy? I, I would absolutely agree on Alex's uh, talk and in, in what Alex just said. Um, I believe, you know, I don't know how to explain it really. I don't, I don't think I have words to describe when when we cooks were fully in in touch or fully connected because when you're you're when you're fully connected to the momentum of 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 uh, cooking as a as a as, as an act you know this is what we we truly uh feel in love with when we first become became uh, chefs or or when we had the opportunity to open a restaurant or just a just to be a leader of a of a kitchen, you know, or lead a kitchen. I'm sorry. Um, so I I believe that um, 
that is the magic you know just to, not to to lose that that flash that that beauty of of enjoying that uh, momentum where imagination plays around on our minds so um you know there's too many distracting points around our careers as as cooks and it, it's, it's all fine it's all good but as long as you don't leave that behind you know we just that is the the important thing and alex said it uh better than i and and yeah i absolutely agree so i, I would i would start in the in the right side as well I would ask, uh, like to ask you one, one more thing that uh, came to my mind. Would you call the social media the bright or the dark side uh, for the gastronomy nowadays? Because we know, of course, that social media can save the day, can be a free advertisement. We can show everything on Instagram during lives or photos or on the Facebook or wherever else or whatever else, uh, whatever um, medium we are using. But again, we might have this instant competition to upload something newer, better or frequently all the time. Would you call the social media the something that makes uh, the gastronomy brighter or darker eric yes sorry i would say that it can be both sides it uh, for example it brings us together today and uh, throughout social media we can share knowledge and we can learn from each, each other's experiences but but you cannot cook on instagram <laughs> you can only cook in your kitchen and you might take good photos and put it up and get a lot of likes and be a and you know a junkie towards that but it is more important to be focused on having happy guests in your restaurant because you are there for them and and you know sometimes i think that that of course we can benefit a lot from the online networking but we also need to 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 turn off the telephone uh, little bit of uh, the time we have six kids at home so my time when i'm not working is with no phone because or else i cannot be present in my kids because then i have to check my instagram i have to be on point i have to be pursuing something so so it also can be a good and a bad thing i would say it's how you use it it's a uh, like all other stuff in uh, life yeah Rodolfo, how, how, what's, what's your approach on the social media versus the bright and the dark side of the gastronomy? I think it could be um, the, 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 the dark side and the bright side at the same time. Depend, it's on you. I, I personally consider myself a terrible, uh, uh, you know, it can be a full-time job. That's what I'm saying, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not really good, so... Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a great tool to communicate. I mean, especially for restaurants. We, we restaurants sometimes, if, you, if you're living, for instance, in, in, in Europe and, and you wanted to see what Alex is doing in, in Brazil, it's a great tool just to communicate and just throw pictures and, and show what is happening. Or for us in, in South America, just knowing what, what Eric is doing up north, it, it would be a great, a great opportunity just to learn from, you know? But at the end, um, my uh, I feel very, uh, very, very blessed to to put it away when, when I'm with my kids, just like as Eric said. <laughs> And Alex, from your experience, uh, wh when you started, there was no Instagram or no Facebook to share all our experiences in the real time. This is my, my the, the food porn. This is my dish. This is what I've just ate. This is what I'm going to eat. Uh, so how do you see this, this change and uh, the social media becoming the part of the gastronomy? Do you see it as a good change or, or a bad influence? Again, we cannot hear you. I'm afraid you didn't switch your mic microphone. I think we have some problem with the sound. No, we, we, we cannot hear you, sadly. So I'll let the technical team tackle it with you on the chat, how we can get the, the voice back. And in the meantime, I'll say hello to Gagan Anand, who joined Hi, us. So I, I, I was very busy in service and I, I still have customers here. I'm in the restaurant. I'm sorry. 
Uh, hi, Rudolfo. Hi, Alex. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I fucked it up. I thought the because I thought that the the timing was six hours, but I forgot it's like not yet the winter time. So it's five hours. So we're glad to have you here. If you are still working uh, now and you say you, you still have guests at your work, then the questions will be no. quite quite short for you. But uh, no. already you, I see that this is this is the, the passion for, for your work. So uh, and this is what we discuss it uh, today as well in terms of a dark side of the business that we shouldn't just run the business. We should show or we should base on the passion for for work. Do you agree that that, that uh, creating and running a restaurant is more about passion than just looking at the Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> oh, what is Excel? Uh, like, like, uh, what, what is your balance? What is your m the money coming I in? <laughs> I mean, I, I only first time in my life I I looked at balance sheet and Excel was after COVID. <laughs> you know? Yeah, before COVID, we chefs were too busy doing our job as passion, and today our passion is a threat. And that is the biggest problem we have, the threat of losing what we love the most. And that's why we have to look at that numbers. But who cares about number? I think everybody in the world is in this very deep situation. And the only way to fight this out is with the passion of loving what we have to do. I mean, how do we, how do we, uh, I mean, we are chefs, we are not restaurants, we are not investors, we are not bankers. We, we invest in talent, we invest in, uh, 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 the whole idea of creating the food we time, our time, our effort, our personal life, nothing is in uh, in space. Everything we do is for our restaurant, for the life of this, sh that we dedicated to this jacket here. So uh, I think uh, it's all about passion and nothing else. And everything else is just a propaganda. Uh, talking about the propaganda, what would be your point of view from from being in, in Thailand and, and uh, running a business there about the social media? We've just discussed uh, the fact whether the social media is a bright or a dark side for the gastronomy. So does it help you or does it m make an unnecessary uh, uh, way of, of trying to be better, faster, having more photos or whatsoever? So how do you approach this, this aspect as being dark or bright side? I think uh, I know you by social media, so it's a bright side. The dark side is that I am not on time. <laughs> How do I say? I mean, uh, social media is quite relevant. It's the new way. It's a new everything that you do, everything that we say, we cannot take it back. If suppose I say something which is racist or something which is I hate someone's sentiment, it's instantly on social media. If you say something good, it's also on social media. So we have to be more behaved probably or we have to be making sure that what we write is correct but uh, i think uh, chefs like alex and rudolfo and other chefs that i know are are extremely uh, not naive but living in their own comfort of being what they are as people and in our dark side is our bright side so in our dark side if we post something which is strong which is heavy and which is like a uh, hitting the influencers, like just giving example, I'll give example. The only day I realized how powerful social media is, is when I posted a raw crab being killed by a, a 60 year old guy who's famous for making sashimi of a crab in Japan for 50 years. He's been doing that in Hokkaido. And by mistake, I posted that. And people gave me so much shit. The vegan army, the vegan terrorists, the animal lovers, the pet friendly, the plant people who don't eat anything except wood. All these people came after me. And that day I realized how hate is incredible. I lost followers that day. I lost people. But I did not delete the video because that is the proof. And I remember once Alex told in Mad Forum, he said, cooking starts with a death. This is Alex's words. Cooking starts with a death. Yeah, I remember that word. And he took a chicken and he took the fucking neck out of the chicken. And that was a statement. He might be hated. He might be loved. But that is what is our dark side. What the fuck? We can cook anything live. We can burn a lobster. We can cook a live fish. We can cook, cook anything we want. But we can't show it on social media. We live in a fake world. 
yeah, Rich this, this might be this might be the the aspect of being living in a fake world. But I think like the hatred or the hate uh, sh should be balanced on both sides. Here is speaking to you, Anna, the vegetarian, talking to all of you meat eaters and and preparing the food for different uh, reasons and different ways. And still, we should be able to 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 talk oh, in I the way that that we uh, respect each other. So yes, the the hate on the social media can be a dark side, but still but we can way, work our way around as we work it today i give you a very funny example there's a small little sandwich restaurant in bangkok and because they are thais and they don't understand english properly but they understood that black life matters by mistake they posted a sandwich which was made of a charcoal bread and said black life matter sandwich they had to shut the restaurant they had to shut the restaurant because they posted a wrong sandwich at the wrong time hate how do you cure hate? Yeah, so so this this definitely can be put into the the basket of the dark side of the gastronomy or the dark side of the world simply because the, this hate is common for all the um, all everything that we do and for all the all the businesses. If you would uh, have to list anything from your perspective that is really the dark side of gastronomy, because we talked today about the drugs and alcohol, working overtime, having no time for your personal life, pushing yourself to too far and uh, not appreciating the people and everything around you for you what would be maybe something new not only from this list what would be the real dark side of the gastronomy huh. yeah i think the darkest side of gastronomy is today we see in covid is that a lot of chefs a lot of restaurants a lot of people every day we get so many requests from people that they're losing jobs and we cannot provide them a job. We cannot provide this. This industry is a very unsustainable industry right now. And uh, I think uh, the dark side is that, especially post COVID, we will we will value people more than business. And I think that is a learning step. It's in a dark side that we see the bad nice. In because I'll tell you, in the same customer, the same restaurant which was full and sold out and had all the ego pumpy in our bloods in every chef that I am whatsoever I am and my restaurant is full and I don't care a fuck about anything but after COVID we are chickens we are on debt parole and we are waiting how we can retain our staff we are losing people we are losing talent but I think in this dark side when the future is much brighter at least people will value cooking more because the best thing about cooking is that when people start making breads they realize oh fuck making a bread is not easy yeah they realize cooking in home is no more easy yeah so we chefs are more valuable today yeah, surely. And uh, today in some previous discussion, we had uh, examples for that where people were very eager during the pandemic and uh, continuing uh, till nowadays to learn from the chefs, from the online courses, live cooking shows, how to cook, how to cook properly, how to enjoy food, how to prepare food nicely, how not to have the junk food or big amounts of food, but how to enjoy food and how to listen to the chefs and why uh, the way the chefs are preparing the food is is, is the way it should be prepared, not just produced, but prepared with love and, and, and with respect to the, to the ingredients as well. So thinking about the pandemic, thinking about the world we are now and the world we are going towards, because in some other discussion today, we also discussed the fact that it might not be the last pandemic that we have, that must, might not be the last challenge that we have. What should be changed in, cha in Chef's uh, work and attitude in the now, uh, in the modern world what we should think forward uh, to maybe overcome some dark sides and uh, go towards the bright uh, side rodolfo any final thoughts uh, any nice thoughts uh, something to for us as a takeout from this discussion that will take us from the dark side to more brighter one So sorry, can you repeat the, the question? So sorry. Yes, yeah, so in this, um, in this world that we are living now, in, the, in also facing the pandemic, facing all the changes that we've discussed and all the dark sides, what should be changed in the chef's work and attitude, or in the modern chef's work and attitude to take us a little bit more towards the brighter side of the gastronomy and uh, let us leave the darker side behind? Look, 
I, I feel that we, we already talked a little bit about this, uh, but I believe that probably this pandemic situation will, will as Gagan just said, uh, will brought us a, to, to a total new situation, you know? Um, you know, our restaurants are empty for a reason. Uh, some countries are, are still locked down and, and, you know, for instance, in Chile, we're still not able to open restaurants or, or whatever, whatever the situation it will be. Um, we're losing things. Uh, we're, we're gaining another, another ones. I believe that, um, uh, within the next, I don't know, few, few years, we're going to have to learn how to, uh, re rediscover our own, you know, as, as cooks and, and just to be, try to be more, uh, more, or understand better the, 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 the ingredients, our, our, our businesses and just to not to be, not to stop paying attention to, to what we're cooking, our daily dues. That's what I believe, you know? Uh, and when, when you're, when you're cooking and, you know, you have, maybe we have too much attention, uh, because of what Alex just said about the list, about this, about that. And, and, you know, we, we probably going to be very, from now and beyond, we're going to when we coming back and when the situation gets, gets back, we're going to be, have to be very focused on, on, uh, on, on cooking. This is what, what is the, should be our engines to, to move forward. Yeah. Eric, your thoughts on the post pandemic approach of the chefs and the, their attitude. Um, I think we all the guys here, they have summed it up very well, but I think that we, we gonna come out of course damaged, but hopefully also strong on some sides, um, th towards being more in the kitchen being more present in what we do instead of being on social media. So be on point, uh, cooking for the guests, because I think the modern chef also sometimes can value fame over the guest. And I think that changes when you have an empty restaurant. I think that you, you see that you can't pay your bills with uh, Instagram likes and you can't pay uh, with good ideas uh, online, but you have to be focused with your guests. So I think that that is uh, what's going to come out of it. It's going to be a bit, a better, more condensed focus towards the guest, hopefully. Let's hope for the best. Alex, a final takeout from you. Now you guys are hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. What we can do, maybe we can lose inside of us re-understand our movements, our actions, our, our desires, our deepest desires. Why? Because maybe we became addicted by social media. We can't blame social media. We can blame ourselves to be addicted to fucking digital social media. This is my point. Stop to try to find fucking don't try to blame the others. Just re replace it yourself. Thinking what, what you can do and what we might do. It's, it's just it. <laughs>